Well, hello and welcome to AI, The Future of Us, which is a podcast-style video series that explores the ways in which AI is shaping our future and how we can prepare for the changes that lie ahead. I'm your host, Forrest Brazil, and today we're joined by Ferrat Tekener, who is a product manager at Google Cloud focused on data and analytics. Ferrat, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Forrest. Good to, uh, good to see you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, we're going to be talking today about how AI impacts the future of business analysts specifically. And I think maybe the best place to start is to talk a little bit about your background in this area. Firat. So can you tell us a little bit about your expertise in the field of, of data and AI? How, how did you get into uh, the work that you're doing now? Thank you. It's it's interesting. So uh, I did my PhD and, you know, many, many years ago in reinforcement learning and, you know, AI. Uh, but no one wanted to pay for my skills. I did my postdocs and became an academic. And it's interesting that, you know, uh, 20 years ago, it was popular, but it wasn't, you know, in the business area at all. So I moved into data analytics, continuing to do AI as well. So I work with world's largest organizations, helping them to build their, you know, data analytics uh, environments and such. Uh, and then, you know, came to Google building, you know, interesting products for our customers. So you're sort of an undercover AI expert in the field of data, which is perfect for the conversation that we're having. Uh, so with that said, you know, what do you find most fascinating about where we're at in AI right now, Farah? Maybe especially with the, the advances in generative AI that we've seen over the last few years. What's exciting you right now? I think the, you know, one of the challenges throughout the years is difficulty on getting the environments into the hands of the, you know, AI practitioners, right? So it was very expensive. There were only very few people can do it. And realizing the return on investments for the organizations were very difficult, right? So uh, what we are seeing now is increased interest because tools are becoming such that people can see the benefits of AI in their day-to-day -day lives. And that's what generative AI is giving us, right? So using something like BART, for example, and writing, you know, some questions to it and getting summaries of some articles is really helping us in terms of the productivity that will impact everyone, right? It is not just going to be the, you know, people who are, you know, experts in the area, but we are really broadening it. And I don't want to use the democratization, but we are really democratizing the AI to the masses as well. Yeah, I, well, I think you're right on about that, Farad. And I mean, even more than that, you've started to dive into what does this mean for specific roles, right? For specific people, even beyond just that narrow subset of quote unquote AI experts. And that leads us right back to where we started, which is with, with business analysts. So, Let's say I'm a business analyst right now. I've been doing this for a few years. You know, I've got established existing workflows. How do you see AI affecting my field in the next few years? What what impact do you think it's going to have on me? I think it is, you know, it is interesting, right? And I'll start with a dream. My dream is that as a business analyst, you come and what you have in your mind, you just articulate as a, you know, nature language. Give me the you know the, the the top ten products that we sold within the past ten weeks, right? It is a typical BI dashboard at the end of the day. Imagine coming and doing it that way, and accessing to the dashboard straight away. Or the the other part of this is that you know you don't really need to go and do the data engineering. The system will build everything for you, and you'll be able to start using that. That doesn't mean that the data analyst will not be there because someone really needs to still look into things like the data quality, the you know whether it is using the right sources, whether it has the most refreshed data and such as well, right? And someone really needs to bring that context and bring that you know know-how from the business side into that and articulate what those results are. So the business analysts will be there, but their productivity will be uplifted. They are not going to spend time on what are these APIs or the data types that I need to bring in to be able to massage this data and show this dashboard. That will be really, you know, there'll be a catalyst from the, the generative AI side of things. We'll get to the results faster and we'll spend more time on activating 
the business problems and having more impact to it as well. Yes, I, I well remember working for a BI company years ago and wrangling with their custom DSL and trying to figure out how to get past that to the questions that I wanted to ask. And bringing that natural language in is, I think, exciting because of the barriers it can remove, right, between us and the interesting questions. What do you think, uh, I mean, alongside of the the productivity increases, right? We know there are potentially some some ethical considerations to applying automated intelligence, generative AI to some of the things that business analysts do. So what do you think are some of these pressing ethical considerations surrounding the integration of AI with a business analyst's work? And that's a very good question, right? And that's one of the, you know, things that we'll be seeing a lot. For example, the, you know, the the robots, and I want to call them the robots, right? So I've been explaining this to my eight-year-old. So she comes with, and you know, Daddy, how can we build? How can I ask questions and get these results? Because I've been telling her about everything around the bar, then chat GB10, such of the world, right? So, and she's like, how can get? How can it get me all of this information? You know, it's human beings building the algorithms. It is processing the data and the you know, content that we have been generating throughout the years and decades and centuries, in a sense, which is what we are feeding into the, you know, the models here, right? So, naturally, our thinking is changing throughout the years as well. Some of the things that we found, you know, may be acceptable, which we are realizing they are not the right things and right attitudes anymore, because we are evolving, you know? Systems, unfortunately, don't sit that way. We are feeding the information as one go, right? They are not separating all the, you know, information out there on the internet. As a result, they come with biases. They are trained on data that can be biased. So we need to be mindful of that. Also, there's privacy issues as well. Who owns the data? Where the data sources are coming from? right? This is an important aspect of it. And transparency is important, right? So how did you get to that information? How do I, how could I be sure that it is the correct information as well that you are displacing? The, the one thing about the, you know, the, the, you know, LLMs is they are convincing on lying as well, right? The hallucination that the term that came from, you know, Google researchers is, you know, is really so convincing when it gives out the results that you believe that that's the correct information. How do you know that this is the correct information? Or who decides what is correct or not as well, right? So we are going to be seeing challenges around that a lot. No question. And of course, we know some of these questions have been around for a while, right? Bias is not a new problem in the data world. Uh, you know, making sure you have clean, accurate data has long been a challenge. But it seems like some of these things are being, they're being accelerated. They're being thrust more to the forefront by the speed with which we're now able to produce some of this stuff, uh, which is, you know, both exciting and maybe a little bit terrifying. So the last thing I want to ask you about is just really practically, um, what are some key skills that I need as a business analyst to be able to remain successful to, to, I don't want to say AI proof my career exactly, but to continue to stay relevant and uh, uh, take advantage of these things that are coming out. Right. So the, one of the things that I would uh, stay up to date with the latest developments, right? So try understanding. It is a rapidly evolving, you know, field. We'll be seeing a lot more changes. It is like really trying to catch up a very fast moving train, if you like, right? So try to understand, you know, what are the key areas to focus on? Try to stay up to date. Learn about the, you know, exactly what you mentioned about the ethical considerations around, you know, surrounding AI as well, because we really want to give the, you know, the right answers and develop skills that will be in demand in the future, right? AI is likely to automate some of the jobs, but not everything. If you have the right background, if you have the right foundations, you'll be able to articulate the results that comes out of it. If you be able are able to, you know, put your understanding and, you know, uh, your viewpoint on it, you'll be really leading this. And most importantly, you know, and I remember one of my first mentors in life telling me this, be open to change, be bold. It is not about, I know this particular system anymore. Systems are going to change. 
but I know the skills. I understand how to, you know, uh, work with data. I understand how to get the insights and articulate the insights from the data, you know, and be responsible as well. AI is going to be a really powerful tool, right? We need to use that responsibly, you know? These are the key things. You know, if you have the right foundations, I think you'll be succeeding. That's how I see it. I think it. it comes all comes down to responsibility, accountability, and trust, doesn't it? Always That's has, right. it always will. Thank you so much for joining us today, Firat. It's been incredibly insightful to hear your thoughts on the impact and the effective use of AI. And of course, we all look forward to seeing how AI will continue to shape the world around us, right? And we hope that uh, everybody watching this will be inspired to embrace uh, its potential and its opportunities. So thank you so much, Firat. Have a great rest of your day. And thanks for having me, Forrest. Thank you.